Studentpreneur, the podcast about students who are entrepreneurs. Get motivated and keep your energy high. Stories from Studentpreneurs. This episode is sponsored by ID Network, a network of university associations run by studentpreneurs for studentpreneurs. Visit idnetwork.com.au. Welcome to episode 19. My name is Julian Marchant, entrepreneur turned PhD student. Each week, I bring you the best of those individuals who are students and entrepreneurs. I call them studentpreneurs. This week, our studentpreneur is Elsa Sheehan. We met at an ID Network event in Brisbane, and I was impressed by her overwhelming positive energy. And wait till you hear her story. It's really inspiring. Today, we've got uh, Elsa Sheehan with us. She is studying finance and accounting at Queensland University of Technology uh, in Brisbane, Australia. Elsa is 30 and she started a business called Shanghai Private Guide. I think that's it. Is that right, Elsa? Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit more and tell us a bit about Shanghai Private Guide? Cool. Yes, of course. Like Julia said, I'm from QT at the moment and i also originally from China. The business I'm running is based in Shanghai. I got a small team in Shanghai. We offer the service, including find the suppliers and supplies and factories for the international business. Also offer them the translation service and even help them expand their business in China. Or we also offer the private tour for the small tourist group in Shanghai, also all of China. So when you say private guide, it's tourist guide, but also business guide. You're, like, you're finding out uh, suppliers and, and stuff like that. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. And, um, so what type of business did you introduce in China? Oh. Uh, like uh, clothes or? It's basically, it's industrial product. Industrial products. I, yeah, I used to, to work in the factory as a mechanical engineer. So I have a lot of connection of the industrial product over all of China. So that's helped me now, the business in Shanghai, basically around Shanghai to find the industrial products like uh, thermal steel, steels, like industrial products. <laughs> it's too many. That's good. And um, how do people find you? Because I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that want to expand their business in China, but it's hard to f- like, I've never heard of a business like yours. How, how do they find you? From online? From Google, through our website, also through the networking. Okay. Like I was, our team or me are trying to go to the networking in Shanghai to introduce our business. Shanghai have a lot of networking events. These days, a lot of people come to China to do business. So it's kind of um, really not difficult for us. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's totally different as in Brisbane. As I live in Brisbane now... As a student, I don't have so much opportunity to do this kind of thing. But in Shanghai, we do have a lot. Wow. And uh, so how did you get started? Like, how, When did little Elsa Shen realize she could start a business? I mean, I always believe that I have nothing to lose. I grew up in a very small Chinese village. When I was a kid, I was like passionate about to have a small business. When I was like working in the office for so many years, I get so boring. I'm so tired of working, <laughs> sitting on the desk. So the first... Hang on, hang on. What, what age do you start working behind a desk? Uh, 20. When okay. I had my yeah. first degree, did like a long time ago, I worked in, in front of a desk and drawing every day, every day face the machine. That's wow. not the life I want to be. Yeah, just like the business when I started, just like, Shanghai got 2000 time, they got Shanghai Expo. Yeah. That bring a lot of people come to Shanghai. At that time, I even don't speak much English. I thought I would never get in touch with international business or to be a guide or tourist guide for international people. Yeah, exactly. But one of my friends say, our language is not that important. <laughs> Most important is like you got the personality. Then okay. I was just like, okay, I will give it a try. Then I try. I first just start to work for agency. They pay a little bit of money for a day. But after a while, I got more customer. Then I like uh, built word of mouth. More customer come to me. Also, I got like um, importing, exporting work experience when I was in Shenzhen, the city near Hong Kong. 
So it's very good combination. Ah, so you went to Hong, uh, well, you went to Hong Kong as well. Oh yeah, I went to Hong Kong. The city like only half hour by train from Hong Kong. Yes, okay. A lot of a lot of small business over there. I was sell something in the street over there. I catch by the police. Then I still <laughs> keep going. I lose money, but it's not important. <laughs> just keep trying. What I say, so yeah. Just keep trying. When you are young, you have nothing to lose. But yeah, because like not speaking the language and like rocking up to foreigners and not being able that that could be daunting. Like that, I... it is. <laughs> I meet some difficult and also a lot of embarrassing moment. But at the same time, if you if you work for an agency, like it it didn't matter, right? Like the worst case scenario is you lose the job, but it's still a casual job anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's a casual job. I had to earn some money when I was in Shenzhen. I did some trading business. I get like some customer like still make my life going so I don't worry about like I lose this job I don't care mm. as long as I got a bed to sleep I got like <laughs> my next meal I'm fine oh well, that's the bare minimum wow yeah I still got attitude when I'm in Australia now and once I got food to eat I got place to sleep and I'm fine yeah because um now you're in um you were studying at uh, the University of uh, QUT, so you have to pay double amount of fees, don't you? Like, so you have to. How do you manage? Yeah, it's a big uh, money for me at the moment. I still didn't have debt. I do appreciate. Wow. I, I don't have rich parents to pay for me. Not even coin. Not even one coin from my parents. Wow. And also, I don't have scholarship. I'm not smart enough for scholarship. <laughs> I'm not academic at all. Yeah. But the, my business helped me earn some money. So you're supporting yourself mostly through your business? Yeah, through mostly through my business. I saw also I do some part-time job over in Australia. Yeah. I still get some trading business, exporting, importing. Yes. Yeah, kind of mixture. Wow. So you, you do several things just to be able to pay for your, uh, for your school and then for accommodation. and. Yes. Wow. Expense. Not money, drink and party. No time and no <laughs> <laughs> And so so when did you get that mentality of you've got nothing to lose, I can try it anyway? Like did you read something or how, how did that happen? Was it your parents? I think it's it's um about my grow up story or my grow up experience. I grew up in a very poor Chinese village, very rural area thousands, thousands miles away from Shanghai. And when I was kids, we, my village had electricity when I was 10. Before oh. 10, well, there was dark. And we used kind of very old traditional to make the light. Oh, my God. And I, met, I was one of the three child. Like many people know, China got one child policy. Not in my family. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you were more like your parents were farmers or something? Or? Yeah, they are farmers and they break the law, have more than two kids. Wow. So it's a very serious situation in the 1990s. The government take us everything. Yeah. So I basically depend on even not enough rice to eat when I was at the end of the year. My grandparents helped us. So I was able to not starve or not hungry. I still okay. Oh, wow. Um, I I think that's kind of grow up experience. Also, I'm, I'm the oldest child. I got to take care of my uh, younger brother and sister when I was, my, my parents went to work in Shenzhen when I was 13. So I what, it, what do you mean they went away to work? Yeah, they, they have to go to the city to earn money to send back home. This is very common in China in a small village. So many kids grow up with their, gra- with their grandparents. grandparents. Yes, but also like... You could be grow very good. I was a good example. So I didn't lose my parents' face. Yeah, but my brother is not a very good example. Just like grow with the grandparents is not a great idea. Yeah. So yeah, so you can have the same experience, but you can turn out differently. Yeah, yeah, it is. I was very lucky. I understand now when you say uh, only worry about having a bed and the next meal is because that's how you... You grew up. <laughs> that, so yeah. So you, so you know what it is to live like uh, with nothing, and that's it's actually a really good mindset because if you got nothing to lose and you don't care about you know mobile phone, TV, cars, and all that, then <laughs> yeah, then you got it's, nothing it's, to lose. <laughs> yeah. Also, you really appreciate like at the moment I got the chance to get education from Australia. 
this is like it's never going to happen from the people from my village. Like I'm the first girl in the village went to the Chinese uni ten years ago. Wow. And my grandparents were so happy. I was fighting for my education for my parents. If I'm not fighting, I will be left to school when I was fifteen or fourteen. Get married with somebody already have. No way! Okay. Is this still happening? Yeah, it's happening.、Oh. Uh, in a small village, I、uh, still have the arranged marriage. It's less and less, but still happening. Wow! So you had to. Well, okay, that's okay. That's you had to make the decision yourself to fight against having your life chosen for you and to make your own life basically. It is. If I can do it, I think everybody can do it if they are fighting. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, with all all your your experience, like working behind a desk as as an engineer and running your own business, what type of skill set did you build and did you bring to your business now? I think you first have to have some business knowledge to already have some experience to deal with different customer. So, when you say business logic, like street smart business, right? Like customer service and and things like that. Yeah, business is very reality. You're not going to help your customer lose money. <laughs> If you lose <laughs> money, what's the point to be a business? Then I think you you gonna to learning and keep. I think the best skill from me is keep trying. Keep trying. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. It's keep trying, and you never know at that point. You never know or lose or win, and you never know before you try. Just after you try, you will know. Yeah, but it's hard to keep this skill because this mentality because. Of course, at some stage you're going to lose something and it's going to hurt. And to keep trying it, that's really hard to keep it up. I know, I know. It's like I'm always trying to talk with my Australian classmate. I say you should go to probably Laos or Cambodia. When you fail here, you're going to go to poor country to have a try their life over there. Yes. Then you're back、yeah. here. You will give it a try. Once you you have had that poor experience, you will. Once you're back here, you will、yeah. keep trying. I think that's very true. As I told you before, my mother lives in Madagascar, and every time I spend some time there, it's it's、yeah. wow. You do appreciate what you have, <laughs> and you realize you realize that you know your problems are nothing. <laughs> like, It is really I mean, nothing. I, yeah, like I do appreciate, and sometimes I still get spoiled. When I was in Shanghai,、I、got good life, a good job, everything's good. Yeah,、and、at that time. I if I don't feel appreciate, I feel like myself. My gosh, I got into traveling again. So I went to <laughs> Nepal, went to Fiji, like just to go to the village to、yeah. spend time with the kids. Then I found it like after a few weeks in the back. Oh, I have so much motivation for my life, for build my business, for my social life, for everything. I have just so motivation. Traveling would be a very good idea. That's true. Well, but traveling not in. Developed countries, but in poor countries. Yeah, yeah. in a very yeah. remote part. And, and it keeps you focused, like focus on what really matters, really. Yeah, it is. At the end of the day, you like keep yourself quiet with some yoga music. What's really matter? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really good. Any other skill, like you, so you said, business logic, keep trying. Any anything else that you you brought from one you learned from one business to another? Did you learn anything from working behind a desk? No, <laughs> no. I, I was learning everything. Go to visit different factories. I went to so many factories. Sounds exciting. Was, yeah, I was like because I used to do when I was sixteen. I already start working the factory. Oh wow! So so you work in a factory and then you went to university. Yeah, I work in the factory during summer holiday. Of course. Yeah. Then <laughs> I I remember I get paid thirty cents per hour. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> then the people treat me like like a, not a, very respectful. Yeah, yeah, they just like speak like smack. I don't know how to say like it's just you hard. I'm very、really、strong personality person, and if people not respect me and their eye, I can read their eyes. Kind of like look look down upon. I don't want to be that. So after working the factory when I back home, I study even harder. I'm going to use education to change my life.、That's, wow! Well, that's a good motivation. Yeah, yeah. That's the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now the big question: How do you balance your studies and your business, especially because your business supports you? So how do you balance both of them? 
actually, it's I had a very, very tough last two years in Australia. And first is culture shock, language barrier, everything. At the beginning, first half year, I was have very difficult to. I still keep my business like I just spend probably one hour a day to reply email. I have very good team in Shanghai to support me. Once I transfer the email, they will straight away reply for me. And for study, I have so much cry. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, and, and and even you, with your strength and your mentality, even you, you had the tears. Yeah, it is. My yeah. first semester, I remember I did a four units for summer course in Australia. Um, that's my first time never been to English lecture. I never have an English lecture of before. Of course, yeah, of course. Then four units. Then I'm just like, oh, I'm too old. I'm going to finish my degree <laughs> as as early as possible. So I was just give it a try for four, four, units, yeah. four units for summer. Oh, I was no. so hard, so hard. At yeah. the end, I got a one high distinction. Oh, well. Six and five. I was so satisfied for that GPA. What? That, yeah, I know. I had never believed like I could do that. I was thinking I'm going to fail one unit at least. I'm already ready to pay like three hundred Aussie dollar. I'm going to pay anyway. I'm prepare that money. I'm going to probably going to fail that unit, but it's not happened. And it's running great. And after that semester, I even start to do one of the subject、uh, private tutor. So you became a tutor. <laughs> yeah, I do like data analysis, private tutor, and my lecturer introduced me to other Australian students. I have been keeping doing it for the last one year and a half. Nice. The, yeah, the way I learn, I use very simple way, like simple mathematics. When you use data analysis as a student point of view, when you student teach students, they are much more understanding. And I just like I'm available. I never think I could do that before. Wow, that's amazing. And you still paid thirty cents an hour? No, no, that's much better. No way. <laughs> We are in Australia. Well,、wow. so, the balance. I think I I still feel like I'm very intense when I study and work. Work at the moment. I also、uh, my business in Shanghai. So if I feel stress, I'm most of the time I will just put myself do yoga, meditate to relax my mind, and then it keeps me going. I mean, that's the best way to keep myself balanced here. You're the、It's- first one. You're like interview nineteen. You're the first one who mentioned yoga to balance. <laughs> I, I <laughs> think I'm I'm older than most students. <laughs> okay, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's. I had a lot of、uh, traveling experience, like in in very in South East Asia, through Tibet, Nepal, backpack traveling to through north of Thailand and to find my inner peace. When I was probably five years ago, when I a little bit lost of myself in Shanghai, then through that trip, I found a lot more about myself. I start to love to be a yoga meditate. I even registered to be half the way to be a yoga teacher in north of Thailand in Chiang Mai. That's really about my passion. I mean, one of the passion is small business, but the other passion would be all、uh, like yoga meditate. I hope one day I can combine yes, of course, two together business and relaxation be together, then to make your life balance. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like,、um, yeah, this is a lot to do at the moment. Meditation is becoming very trendy、um, in the Silicon Valley. Like a lot of entrep- like mature entrepreneurs say, they are meditating、um, in the morning. So it's it's starting to to really reach the entrepreneurship area. And、um, there is a guy like there is a guy who runs a podcast, and it's ten minutes meditation daily. And、um, it's very simple, right? Like very simple, ten minutes. But it's it's a, re- a very easy way for people who are not used to meditate and do yoga. To get into it because it's only ten minutes and, and it's only about breathing, right? It, yeah, everyone knows how to breathe. <laughs> yeah. Also, you spend time with yourself. It's、Correct. not like you focus on yourself and listen to your heart. Ask your heart what you really want. It's like every day you just be really rushed to the business, business rush to study, rush to in the traffic. But how many minutes or how long you spend time really with yourself? Not many. That's right. 
there's definitely um, a business there. I mean, not, not just a, a yoga instructor, but there is something there. I don't know. Yeah, I, I found in the uh, Western world, meditation is very popular now. Yes, correct. So, one month ago, I went to uh, Brisbane Convention Center, meet the Dalai Lama. Oh. oh my gosh, he was so popular. I always looking forward to meet him, but I never meet him in person. I'm just one of the, his audience and was so popular in the convention center than the Buddhist teaching way, making because the Western brain I never stopped thinking. And they always thinking that's why the Western world is more wealthy and more organized compared to Chinese. They're more organized business, they organize their housework, everything, because they always keep thinking. But also it's one of the disadvantage for them as well, because they cannot stop thinking. They that's, think, that's very true. Yeah. Cannot relax. But Asians, we can stop thinking. We can sleep, <laughs> we can sleep anywhere. And we we have to learn how to do this. I mean well, because we've been told so, for so long that multitasking is a good thing. And so we do so many things at the same time. And now studies are starting to show that actually when you multitask, it's not good. You're not performing as well. So, yeah, it is. It- so now that's a really good tip. Uh, meditation, I think. Um, maybe I'll, I'll have a podcast about, an episode about, about this. No, you're right, because it is hard when you're young to think already about meditation. And, and especially like most of the, interview, the interviewees that we had so far have been men and it's you know, not many men do yoga to begin with. So young men doing yoga, that's even less. <laughs> yeah, I was like always when I ask people, why not try yoga? They say, I'm not flexible. <laughs> I was Actually, I have some kind of business idea, like combine, encourage everybody come to yoga. Mm-hmm. It's probably like bring their dog. I mean, I used to have a dog and she do yoga with me sometimes when okay. I do yoga, <laughs> just sit there. I think in Australia, everybody walk their dog every day. Why not just to win, use the walk dog time at the same time, do some yoga with your dog? Yeah. Uh, and well, you can do the same with kids because every time my wife go or when I go, we have a problem with who's going to look after the kids when we do uh, yoga. So yeah, it is. you can just do, yoga. make sure you don't mix the dogs with the kids though. <laughs> Oh, I think when you, uh, my attitude, like went towards my dog, it's like my kids. Okay. <laughs> I have the same feeling. I have the same feeling. <laughs> so how do you think you've been learning? Like, do you read books? Do you read blogs, podcasts? Do you talk to your friends? What do you do? I hate reading. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hate reading. So the learning, my way of learning is keep asking. And when... In my lecture, I always, my lecturer, I always say, Elsa, I have too many questions. Stop asking. <laughs> they just make a joke of me. I'm just like, I'm not feel anything. I don't care about what's the stupid question I'm asking. I'm yeah. just keep asking. That's the way it keeps me learning. I don't care. People laugh at me. Like, because I don't know. Of course, I need to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you keep asking questions and you're smiling, it's easier for people to answer. Yes, yes. They, like, I think in Australia, people like to help. They, when they, they fear they could help you, they feel happy. And so I will keep asking. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, in China, the people don't like helping? They like helping, but less than here. Okay. Here, here. probably, yeah, it's, I fear people is more happy to help him. So, yeah, just d- definitely take advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. <laughs> as long as, you know, as, you, as long as like, you make people feel special because they help you and you know you say thank you and stuff like that that's they will keep helping you yeah yeah it is it is i live in the society i think it's very respectful i do appreciate this part and um who else do you listen to shows how else apart from asking questions i'm listening i like to watch youtube video everything i learn from youtube in china i don't have access to youtube but here i have so what type of topics do you do? You... I like Shark Tank. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> I like all their small business stuff. And that's really encouraging. And I also like to listen. I mean, I don't listen to much very famous people's story. I think many famous people have the same story for me. It's a little bit boring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> then I just always listen some I really like the people grow. Like I recently, I met our Tibetan friends. 
how did he uh, 10 years ago went to India and how did he come to Australia, all the story. And I just go to, I like social networking. Then I like go out to meet people, then listen to their story. Then yes. every story I learn a lot. So how do you find those meetups, those events? Online, through friends, uh, okay, on through, Facebook. Through Facebook, okay. <laughs> yeah, Facebook. I, I got a lot of events through Facebook. You had to create your Facebook from scratch when you arrived two years ago because nobody used Facebooks in China, right? Oh, I had it like many years ago when I traveled overseas. Ah, but, okay. Yeah, I just don't use it well in China. Once I oversee, I always like uh, trying to go overseas like twice per year when I was in Shanghai. My first or second would be open my Facebook to see <laughs> <what> the real <laughs> world. Because <laughs> you couldn't open it in China anyway. Yeah, it, it's not. But um, it's very slowly. You could... Through some VPN. like VPN, yeah, to keep the Facebook running, but it's very slow. I don't want to waste my time to, to slow it. <laughs> to check so. your Facebook page, yeah, okay, I understand. <laughs> uh, but so you, so you managed to connect to a lot of people. So when you were in, in, so when you arrived here in Brisbane, you were able to find events slowly and then join all those events. Then yes, social networking. That's how we met. Like, how did you learn about the? Sp- How's it? Was it called a career startup careers event that we went last week? How did you find it? Oh, I, idea networking. Oh, they're running a QT. They are idea networking running a UQ and QT. So I already heard about River Lab. It's very, it's very good for startup business. I do appreciate. It. I went last time, and I will go next weekend as well. Yeah. So what can you tell us? What is on next weekend? They will have um, a workshop for startup business for whole two days to meet the mentor, to talk with um, peers, talk about business. I would be a, I think it would be a great opportunity for me. Yeah, startup weekend events are just uh, are really, really, really good there. Yeah, yeah. It's much more better than I go to uni, like <laughs> exactly. P- PWC, yeah. KPMG events, everybody <laughs> dress very business. Yeah. And uh, when I go there, I just feel, oh, okay, that's not my word, but... Yeah, and then nothing happens there. No, nothing happens, especially for international students. None. Yeah, yeah, None. exactly. So, no, you're right. You will learn much more at Startup Weekend, again, uh, at a meetup with PwC, so yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a real interaction. For yes, your... you're going to make contacts, you're going to meet mentors, you're, you're going to f- see people that are, you know, motivated to do something. Yeah, it is. People like you, so it's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to that. Yep. Well, I hope I'm not overselling it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm an example. How did you find um, support in your entrepreneurship journey? Did you have mentors that help you out, the community? I think uh, my team in Shanghai helped me a lot. They do the real work. Then I get... <laughs> yeah, at the moment, they do the real work. I cannot do <laughs> Anyway, also... Why do you think they do the work and they don't say anything about it? Is that because you've worked with them before and you work hard with them and you started the business? Yes. We all like, um, all the people like me don't want to work in the office. So they want to be, to be freelancer in Shanghai. And we work together for so many years. We know each other really well. And we had some stable customer already. So then they do all the job now. I just need to send an email. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, I think I we are looking for more mentor now. That's why I go to an idea networking. Yes, yeah, that's good. Yeah, to help you out to connect to businesses in Australia and to yeah. Yeah, it did. Did you um talk to your lecturers? Do your lecturers know that you're running a business? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Every day I'm just like my classmate. Looks I'm not looks like thirty. Just like the same as my classmate. Nobody knows. I don't think they. everybody knows. Uh, not anybody knows. No, wh- why don't you want to sh- say that you run a business? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Never have a chance. Never have a chance. And lecture is many. You just ask a lecture question, academic question. Yeah, that's true. And the probably at uni, academic, they probably would never know I sell something in the street. They, ne- they would never understand that kind of situation. Because you so... think they, they don't know the answer? I think so. <laughs> yeah, just like what I say, if you never try, you, you won't know. 
obviously they would never try to sell something in the street. I think at uni or lecturer or any anybody else, I never think they sell something in the street. Yeah, no, that's very true. They've been studying at university their whole life. Yeah, maybe one day they will. Hey, now. some some of us are not too bad, okay? <laughs> oh yeah, yes, yes. No, no, I I don't mean that. I'm an academic now. I got to study really hard to pass my exam. Can you tell us, because you've been like very, very positive during all this interview, you you smile a lot, we can hear you smile and very positive about your story, but I'm pretty sure you have some pretty tough time. Like, can you share uh, one or two tough times that you had? Yes, of course. Of course, I have tough time. Uh, I have tears, especially study here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> like for my running my own business, the tough time would be like in Shenzhen, where I was first to do leave the company, do the trading business. And I was like, get a customer shipping everything to my apartment. I move everything to my apartment. Then I ship it through the shipping company. I go with them, go to the port, just because I don't trust people at that time. Of course. I think when you run a business, you really need trust people. Otherwise, you will have difficult time. Then I remember one day I received a phone call from the police. Uh -uh. Uh, because in China, I know the law is like if you import, export, you receive the money more than 50,000 US dollar, you will be getting trouble or you have to pay tax. You have to below, pay taxes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, below that, you don't need. Okay. Then I was kind of like this. This amount, I received the money from customer, I received a call from police. My gosh, I'm frightened. <laughs> so, what <laughs> yeah. to do? Then they asked me, then after the conversation for a few minutes, oh, that is the other thing. It's not about my trading business. So I feel like, oh my gosh, I feel better. <laughs> At the start, when I start to trading, I was so like every day I'm worried about one day police wanted to get oh, no. me. <laughs> oh. But that's, it's not happening. Just you don't have the knowledge. So you worry. And actually it's not. If you're more than 50,000, you're just going to pay tax. Yes, that's so it. That's yeah, yeah. Fun. I was going to say, well, don't you just pay the taxes and then that's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. So that's it. But you just I mean, you just didn't know. Okay. Yeah, you don't yes. know. I don't know. I have so many failures, but it's never pushed me down. I think, I don't know how to say my failure is too many. But if you talk about that, that is the moment I'm going to share with you. Like, oh, I was frightened at that time. <laughs> yeah. But but at the same time, you kept on going and you kept doing it. So it really made you stronger, really. Yeah, it's made me stronger and spiritually stronger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. All right. Well, that's a, that's a good exam example. Is there any advice you want to tell the audience? Anything else you want to tell us? I think I was talk a lot already. But one thing I would like emphasize is like when as a student or when you are young, in terms of running business, you just need to keep trying. Don't fear too much because you have nothing to lose. You, when you are young, you don't have family, you don't have kids to take away, take care of. You don't have the home now or you're like, just don't need to care about too much. Just keep trying and you have nothing to lose. That's right. And if you've done it, like a lot of people can do it. Like this is no excuse. Yeah, if I can do it. Everybody, I believe everybody here can do it. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's All right. Good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. All the best for your business. We hope you'll get more and more uh, customers. I'll put the, the Facebook page on the show notes, okay? Okay, thank you. It's a Shanghai private guide, right? Yes. Yes, okay, all that. All the best. Thank you very much, Elsa. Thank you, Julia. Very nice to talk to you. Time for wrap-up. Each student print story is different, and what works for some people doesn't for others. However, I'd like to point out a few things in Elsa's journeys that are similar to the student printers I have talked to. Elsa built her fighting spirit through a difficult childhood in a little Chinese village without electricity and having to look after her siblings. She was the first of her family to go to university thanks to that fighting spirit. That spirit is mixed with curiosity, which helped her take the I have nothing to lose to an all new level. Without speaking English, she started working in an English-oriented business and soon started her own venture, Shanghai Private Guide, against all odds. She went through a lot of ups and downs, 
and even through some soul searching after her first university. Her positive mindset helped her push on and now she is studying overseas without any help from her parents but herself and her team in Shanghai. So follow Zaz's advice. Go travel to a developing country, spend some time there and you'll have another perspective on the world. All right, if you've enjoyed this podcast episode, make sure that you subscribe so you can get a fresh episode every Wednesday. Support the Studentpreneur podcast by liking the Facebook page and giving five stars review in iTunes. Keep breaking the mindset and the stereotype.